Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and it's repair time again and I've got another HP power supply to repair. Yes, I found a little niche in repairing these. I seem to be having pretty good luck with them. I think this will be number four. I can't even remember now. Um, so let's get straight on with it. And this one here, I haven't actually unpacked it fully yet, just took out its box and I noticed it's got a little uh, label on the top. And it says, if I just zoom in, Power's on, not working, problems in the controller, it shuts the power supply and restarts again. So it looks like it's just spontaneously rebooting. So let's uh, unpack it and see what it looks like. Yep, I do seem to be having some luck in picking these up and repairing them and uh, reselling them on occasion or giving them away. But uh, I just like repairing them. It's, it's great fun. They're microprocessor based, so it's really neat to get into that sort of thing for me, anyway. So, and here it is. It's an Agilent E3649A, 0 to 35 volt, 1.5 amp, or 0 to 60 volt, 0.8 of an amp. So, it's a different one specifically to the ones I've actually repaired in the past. It doesn't look in too bad condition. The bumper, the rubber bumper around the front panel there does look like it's done its job because it's actually a little bit sort of worn away or um, split at the front, the top left there. But that's good because it means the actual bezel itself never really got hit. It's missing some uh, of the plastic tops to the banana uh, sockets and this one here is a little bit bent yes that looks like it's had a little bit of a let me zoom in on that yeah this one here looks like it's had a bit of a bash don't think that was done during shipping because it was packed fairly well there was a good bit of bubble wrap and cardboard th on the this side of the box anyway so uh, yeah um, or no maybe perhaps it was because there's a bit a little bit of bubble wrap um, stuck in behind there so maybe it did get a whack a bit of a bump uh, missing the color coded top from there They're probably red supposed to be let's turn it round and have a look at the back and there's the back it doesn't look in too bad condition a um, little bit of corrosion around the uh, fixings for the GPIB connector now, other than that it doesn't look too bad it's set up for 230 volt according to the label in the back so that's good so I think the first thing we'll do is we'll open it up and we'll see what the inside looks like right that's the cover off and first impressions it's a little bit dusty it does look to be all intact with the main transformer here with a big analog board at the bottom there and a digital board on the top. All the ribbons seem to be there uh, but looking down inside the unit it is dusty. I'm going to have to, uh, well yeah, here we go. Look, I'll show you here, wow. Let's zoom in on this. As you can see it's just covered absolutely covered so I'll away and get the leaf blower on it and uh, let's see if we can get rid of the, some of that okay and that's it basically blown out got rid of lots or most of the uh, dust and grime etc as much as I could anyway so I think the first thing I'll do before I actually power it up I'm going to actually remove the digital board because uh, it's pretty easy to remove just to have a better look at the analog board inside right Flap that over. Yeah, still quite a lot of grime on the underside. So I'll give that a little bit of a wipe down with some IPA just to clean it off. Well, there we go. It's a little bit better, but it seems to be that the grime and dust that's stuck to the boards is uh, 
been there a while and it's actually almost like it's glued itself to the board. I was able to wipe some of it off uh, with a rag, but basically down in amongst there, especially down in the analogue section. But I think uh, everything's looking okay at the moment. Uh, I think I'll put the digital board back down, put a couple of screws in, and then we'll try powering it up and see what it looks like. Now before I actually go and power it up, I know it's marked as 240 volts in the back, but here's the actual selection on this power supply. There's two PCB mounted switches, and it's actually ma marked on the uh, PCB that uh, the switches should be uh, selected pushed together. In other words, this one here should be pushed that way and the switch at the back there, just out of shot, should be pushed that way for 230 volts or 240. So they are indeed set that way, so I know it's set for 240. And whilst we're in here, you can see a couple of, or two or three reefer caps. Um, I'll probably change out the big one as I normally do, the little ones I normally just leave. There's no visible signs in the big one uh, that's cracked or discoloured which is usually a bit of a giveaway that the, they're starting to fail, uh, but I'll probably change it out anyway. I do have uh, compatible uh, capacitors for that, to X2 capacitors for that. So let's try and power it up and see what happens. Right, here we go. I'll turn my light out just so we can see the display a bit better if need be. So let's power it on. And we've got a little self-test of the display there. And absolutely nothing. Wow, this rings a bell. And one of my previous repairs of an Agilent power supply had exactly the same symptoms. And if you remember rightly, uh, I'll link it down below so you can have a look at that video. It was eventually I'd found the problem and it was a, a corrupt or a damaged ROM on the digital board. Exactly the same symptoms. Because what happens is you would be forgiven for thinking the microprocessor is responsible for resetting the display as you saw there but it's not actually the case there is actually a microprocessor on the actual display circuit board itself which is responsible for turning all segments on then off again but from thereafter there's no communication between the display and the main digital board uh, which is obviously why there's no display. So whether we've got something along similar lines, yet to be seen, uh, but it looks like at the moment we've at least got a digital board problem. Now this power supply is a completely different physical uh, layout to the previous one that I had the problem with. Uh, however, I suspect that the uh, digital board is, shares quite a lot in common with that previous one. So I'll away and uh, dig out the schematics, I'll remove the digital board again and we'll start giving it a good inspection to see if there's anything visibly wrong with it. And uh, of course we could put the scope in it and we can actually start looking at some of the signals after, of course, looking at the power supply rails on the boards to make sure they, are, they meet spec. Okay, so I did print out the schematics and I did go through all the DC supplies off camera there and on the input AC input and bias supply the plus and minus 15.2 they're okay, the plus and minus 16.1, plus and minus 17.4 and the plus 5 volt VREF they're all okay. They're a little bit out of spec but as I've learned from the previous uh, HP and Agilent power supplies I have repaired. I think that's par for the course. They are quite far out, almost up to a volt in some cases. The only one I haven't checked on here is the minus 10 volt VREF, but assuming that's going to be okay, it's just an op amp with a times two gain in it off of the five volt VREF supply. I've also checked on the uh, protection circuit supplies. There's a plus or minus 12 volt supply there as well. I have checked that as well. So I'm quite happy at the moment that all of the DC supplies are probably okay. Uh, the digital board as well, uh, which is on a different schematic. It's got the two 5 volt uh, regulators on it. They're fine as well. So I'm quite happy that the uh, DC supplies are okay. So I think we'll turn now to the digital board and start doing a little bit of probing there. Okay, just off camera there, I uh, set up the power supply on the workbench, got the camera on it and then hit the button. But 
what happened was that the display was working. I thought, wow, what have I done? It all seems to be working. So I'll just try that again. I powered down. Let me try powering it up again. Got the reset and we've got a display. So let me try the buttons in the front panel. Output on off. Well, that's responding. Rotary encoder. Ah, there's something wrong there. Seems to be that the rotary encoder is not outputting pulses as often as it should be when you rotate it. I'm turning this knob hell for leather here. Ah, it's getting faster. It's getting better. So selection of di digits. Back to display limit again. Yeah, that's that. Oh, wow. We just had a reset there on the display when I was pressing the buttons here. Let me try that again. Output on, display limit, current. It's, it's responded perfectly to the push button. Is the digits changing? Ah, I just reset again. Let me try that again. Wow. It'll crash. If it's going to crash, it'll crash on the next press. Yes, it did. Wow. So what could possibly be causing the power supply to reset just by adjusting some of the digits on the display? Well, there's probably a couple of th things that can cause that. Number one, it could be a malformed serial data that's coming from the display board back to the main board and the main board's software doesn't know what to do with it and effectively crashes and that's what resets the main board. I kind of doubt that, but it's possible. The other thing it could be is a power supply issue uh, whereby playing with the front panel controls is spiking the power supply, something like that. And again, it's crashing the main board. Or it could be the reset on the main uh, CPU on the main digital board. Or it could actually be the CPU that's inside the display board that's crashing. And that is in turn causing the main board to reset. I rather think that last option's probably the option I'm going to look at first. The reset circuit on the display board is tied back to the main board so maybe there's a problem with the display board uh, probably possibly even in, in and around the reset circuit uh, which contains quite a few components and maybe there's a problem there and it's sending the reset signal back to the main board spontaneously. So I think the first thing to do is let's disassemble the main front panel and let's get the uh, circuit board out of there. Okay, display bezel off, nut on the rotary encoder off, which allows the board to slide to the left. That's the procedure for getting it removed. And there's a little tab down here. If I can just get that on camera. A little tab there which you just lift up and it allows the green circuit board to come past this end stop here. Which I'll just do now. That's it. And the board should lift out. There we go. And of course the rubber membrane stays behind. Uh, I think what I will do is scope 
the signals coming out of the connector um, looking for that reset signal that goes back to the main board and let's see what that's doing on the scope uh, when we play with the push buttons like what I was doing but first things first I think the first thing I'm going to do actually is take this rotary encoder a bit um, it's possible there's an issue there that might be causing the same problem uh, but just to get that out of the way I'm going to take the rotary, co rotary encoder off and clean it up I'll take it apart, you can get inside it I think if I remember correctly if I can't I think I do have compatible rotary encoders in stock which I, I might be able to use So that's the rotary encoder off the board. Uh, so to get inside it, all you got to do is lift the four tabs around this uh, top surface here and the back just basically falls off of the rotary encoder. And that should expose the little uh, wheel inside uh, which should allow me to clean it up. And the reason I'm going straight, one of the reasons I'm going straight to do this is because on the past, on the previous uh, Agilent power supplies I've been working on, uh, the uh, at least in one of the occasions definitely I needed to do exactly that to clean up the rotary encoder because it was just uh, uh, filthy inside so let's open it up I don't want to bend them too much I just want to bend them enough so that the casing will clear because I will have to press them back down again when I reassemble it okay here we go And there is the wheel inside. So what you have here is three contacts going to the three pins and an actual rotary wheel here. So it's possible that uh, they just need cleaned up a bit. Probably the, maybe the contacts have tarnished slightly and they're not making a good contact on most of the contacts on the actual wheel itself. This isn't a ro this isn't an optical rotary encoder. It's a resistive contact rotary encoder, so it will be subject to tarnishing on those contacts. I'll clean up the whole thing with some IPA first, uh, because it is actually full of grease or oil on this top surface here. Uh, so I'll clean all that all up and I'll uh, apply some new stuff, and I'll get uh, some IPA and. Uh, try and clean up the actual contacts and the surface here as well. It does seem to be a little bit dirty on the inside of here, especially off of the contacts on this uh, plastic base. So, yeah, definitely need of a clean up. I'll probably even bend those the contacts slightly t so that they're making a better contact with the actual uh, wheel itself as well and look at the dirt come off of that wheel definitely a problem and it's visibly changing as I clean it up so yeah now to clean up the actual contacts I'm actually going to use a fiberglass pen which I normally use for cleaning up pads etc on circuit boards and that should detarnish the contacts got to be very delicate with these because they are very small that should be enough and then I will just bend them up very very slightly and 
Now before I reassemble it, I'm actually going to put some contact lubricant on the uh, contacts themselves and I'm going to use some of this deoxid shield. This is a handy little uh, applicator. It's just a almost a tiny little brush as you can see and I'll just put a little drop There we go, and I'll put some on the actual wheel as well, doesn't need much. And before I reassemble I'm going to put a little drop of 3-in-1 onto the uh, shaft there. It's just a tiny little drop there, and then reassemble. Now it can only go on one way because it is actually keyed. There's two little tabs at this end, sorry there's one little tab at this end and two at the other end which mate up with the aluminium part there and that's it. And then squeeze back down it all back together again and it feels completely different which is probably because all that grime's going now so the next thing I'll put it back in the PCB which I'll film off camera and then we'll give it a whirl okay I've got it upside down I think that should be okay to test I don't want to put it back into its uh, plastic bezel yet because like I said I think there's probably some other faults of this display board but let's power it up and see what happens and there we go uh, it'll be a little bit faint for you because we don't have the uh, smoked glass in front of it so see if I can lay this over Output on. Display limit. And let's see what the rotary encoder is doing. I'm on voltage at the moment. Wow! That's much better. Let me put the smoke glass in front of it. See if you can see it. That's a lot better now. Perfect. Very reliable there. Just with the slightest movement of the rotary encoder now, I'm obviously getting perfect contact on the traces inside the rotary encoder, which is translating that to pulses on the output. Perfect. Now let's see what happens if I go to current mode and use these push buttons again. Oh, it's display limit should be on. No, that's not crashing. And it's not crashing in that direction either. 1.4 amps maximum. Put it back up to maximum. That's working now. Doesn't appear to want to crash anymore. That's not crashing. 
So it appears by cleaning up the rotor encoder, I've stopped the unit from crashing. So what do I think's happened here? Well, I'm assuming at the moment that by fixing the rotary encoder, I'm now giving valid pulses back into the microcontroller on the display board here. By pressing some of the buttons on the front panel here, gave the microcontroller bad data overall as a combination of the whole thing, the, the push buttons and the rotary encoder, that gave the microcontroller bad data. And it's maybe been programmed that when that happens, let's reset the whole power supply. So it, it then sends the reset signal out from the display board back to the main controller board. Whether that's the case, I don't know. I think to test it, what I'll do now is I'll reassemble the uh, display board completely and fit it back onto the power supply um, and then we'll take it from there. But first I'm going to clean up these contacts here with the fiberglass pen. It doesn't need much. So the first thing I'm going to do before I put the front panel back on is I'm going to straighten out this banana here. It's uh, sort of pointing in towards the middle of the power supply. And I can see now that I've got the front panel off, it does have a bit of a bend in it. So I think the easiest way to actually straighten it is to put a banana plug into it. So then I'm just going to push it straight again. And that's it straight. Perfect. There we go. I've not fitted the front panel smoke bezel just completely properly at the moment because uh, it might just have to come back off again but just enough so that we can see the digits and just enough so that I can fit the uh, rotary encoder knob. So let's put power on. Let's just reach over and plug it in at the back. Everything's ready for power up. Nope, nothing on the display again. Still think there's another fault going on somewhere. Try again. Yep, so whether we've got a reset problem somewhere, I don't think it's on the display board. It's think it's probably on the uh, main board unless there's a common problem with the reset pulse intermittently reaching the or spontaneously reaching the main board but uh, one step at a time uh, output on display limit voltage yep, that's working perfectly again over the current. That's working okay. Through the push buttons. It doesn't appear to be crashing it now. Just go with the voltage again. No, it's not crashing it now. Well, off camera there, I spent about 5 minutes, maybe even 10 minutes, playing about with all the controls on the front panel, the rotary encoder, etc. And I just can't get it to crash anymore. And I've played with just about everything I possibly can. And it just won't crash, it just seems to be working perfectly. So I think we'll call the display board fixed at the moment and we'll turn to that power on reset problem on the main board. Yep, powered up that time. So let me just 
got a nice flashing digit there. Let me just prod around on... Ah! Now I just basically touched the circuit board and pressed down on the RAM IC very lightly and the board reset. So I think we've got an intermittent problem now. So let me get power back on again, if I can. I'm just prodding in and around the board. Ah, it's frozen. Flashing digit there is local to the microcontroller on the display board. The main board's crashed again. So I'm going to test this by just rotating the rotary encoder as I press the uh, in and around the digital board because that will verify that we've got a crash. I just barely touched the board and it reset. Let's try again. Yeah. Wow, the lightest of touches. I'll try to do this and video at the same time, so hopefully I can manage. One side done. There we go, I'll just clean it up now. Okay, that's the RAM refload and ready for retest. So let's put power back in again. And power up. Okay, we've got a display. Okay. Still working. That appears to have fixed it. I think there was some dry joint at this uh, top right hand corner, the upper pins on the RAM IC U11 dry joint that was stopping it uh, power up sometimes. This is a RAM, this is a ROM chip next to it. I haven't reflowed that. I don't think that's where the problem lies. I'm pressing it as well, flexing the board, and I've got no reset at all. The display is still working perfectly. Brilliant. Yeah, that's fixed it. Well, I think we've made some progress. So, I think we've got a fully functional power supply. Uh, I think the next thing I'll do is I'll do it off camera. I'll change out that reefer cap on the main board. 
and I think then I'll reassemble the board, the main board, back into the chassis. Two minute job, and I'll uh, we'll give it a good test off camera. Reset the power loads of times. I'll actually go ahead and recalibrate uh, the uh, channels again, uh, especially on the current side as well. But I'll do that off camera. It's a bit of a boring bit, really. And uh, hopefully we've got a new power supply for the workshop. Um, I don't have a 60 volt power supply um, without coupling together two channels on another power supply. So I think it will be a handy power supply to have in and around the workshop. Well, there we go. That's all boxed up and appears to be working fine. I've still got to give it a bit more of a clean up. Especially the front panel here. I haven't really cleaned the external surfaces of that. Um, also, I've got to remove some of these little wee white labels that somebody stuck on. There's one, two, three, four of them all together. I think that's probably been uh, some handwritten labels there for some uh, testing purposes or something like that for some workshop somewhere. Um, the rotary encoder knob, well, it's not as nice looking as what I would have hoped for, but I did manage to get one of these off of eBay some time ago, a brand new one. So I'll try again and see if I can pick up another one. And uh, other than that, everything else seems to be clean enough, just needs a bit of a, a wipe down, that's all. This uh, banana here, I would like to replace this one here because it does seem to be a little bit damaged, uh, unless I can get away with just replacing the black plastic bit at the front because I need to get one a red one for this one anyway but uh, that's up and running I'll just go and recalibrate that and uh, it'll go straight onto the workbench thanks for watching